What's up, everybody? How are y'all doing? Hope y'all are having a good janky time. Uh, your boy was kicked off YouTube. Well, let me rephrase. The last podcast I did was kicked off YouTube. And I'm still not really sure why. Uh, YouTube removed it due to medical misinformation. They have a policy, which I looked over a couple times. I couldn't find anything on that policy that I went against or that I violated. YouTube doesn't allow claims about COVID-19 vaccinations that contradict expert consensus from local health authorities or the WHO. I never said anything against the vaccinations, you dumb fucks at YouTube. But here's the problem, people. Algorithms are making these decisions. So if you wondered where's my last podcast on YouTube, that's what's up. It's still on Amazon and SoundCloud, no big deal. Uh, I went ahead and I filed a notion against their decision, and then a couple hours later they held firm, saying that we reviewed your content carefully and have confirmed that it violates our medical misinformation policy. We know this is a probably disappointing news, but it's our job to make sure that YouTube is a safe place for all. And uh, the, what really pisses me off is that this is a warning. This is a made-up warning, really. How this affects your channel, this is what they tell me. We won't be putting your content back up on YouTube. If your appeal was for a warning, you will not be given another warning in the future, which this is not a warning. If your appeal was for a strike, the strike will remain on your channel. Disgusting. Dystopian. Um, and I did review my podcast last week and I was joking about things, but I never even joked about not taking the vaccination, not believing in it. In fact, I did quite the opposite. I was singing its praises. So I don't really know what the fuck YouTube is talking about. I made jokes about thinking it would be funny if people die because they refuse to get the vaccination, but... Again, I'm making fun of people who don't get the vaccination. There was multiple things I joked about, but never once was it against the vaccination. Um, it's, it's, it's wild because I literally did the complete opposite. And what's even more crazy is that you can't talk to YouTube about. There's just no one that you can talk to. There's no customer service. And you damn well know that a human being did not listen to whatever the algorithm picked up as violating their terms of service or their terms of policy. Because you know an algorithm just picked up a bunch of words that I said and they put them together and, and the machine thought, oh shit, this ain't good. And they kicked off the video. So then my appeal went in and they probably had another computer check it or another algorithm. I don't know. The odds of an actual human being looking at that string of words that was sent to them and actually listening to the podcast, I would put my house up for bid. Like, I, I truly don't think that happened. So... I don't think that I violated the terms, but YouTube is Goliath and your boy here is just little baby David with a little stone in his hand. So what can I do? I will still talk the way I want to talk, joke about what I want to joke about. I don't really feel like I said anything negative about the vaccinations or the WHO or the CDC. Now I did speculate about the upcoming possibility of mandates maybe that's why they kicked me off but they explicitly said in their emails it had to do with the vaccination not about uh quarantine not against cdc measures not against dr fauci nothing they explicitly said covid19 vaccination so fuck if i know if you want to go ahead and re-listen to podcast 62 of Dink Times, Dinker Thoughts, and if you actually hear something that I say that's against the vaccination, let me know, because I sure as shit couldn't find it. So, fuck you, YouTube. Uh, what else is going on? Um, the old man's getting better. 
Uh, I don't think he's going about it the right way, but I can't argue the results. The last few days he has taken no medication whatsoever because he did a little research on his own, which is dangerous, uh, without any supervision. Who knows what he's looking at? And he discovered that one of the medications that was prescribed to him post-surgery has a side effect of dizziness, lightheadedness, fatigue, all these things that are kicking his ass. So he decided, I'm not going to take that, I'm not going to take this, I'm not going to take anything at all. And I'll be damned if he has sounded back to his old self the last few days. However, he was prescribed the medication for a reason. So his doctor is well aware of this. And so uh, in a couple days, he's going to go have a video conference with the doctors. I don't know why it's a video conference. Um, well, I do know why I should, I should say, because he doesn't want to drive because he did get in a little fender bender. I may have talked about this on a previous podcast. Thankfully, this happened in his driveway and not on a freeway or a side street or, a, you know, a, a parking lot of a superstore or anything. He was just backing in his driveway and didn't like the park job, so he backed out and tried straightening out, and he ended up stepping on the gas and smashing into one of his concrete pillars he has on the border of his uh, front yard. $1,300 in damage. And, I, you know, my dad has been a pretty decent driver his whole life, and in the older years, he gets more conservative in his driving, but he's still a decent driver. But he's one of those annoying drivers that goes the speed limit. But luckily, he's uh, he stays in the right lane when he does those things. So that real drivers like your boy here is going 10 or 15 over the speed limit can keep on cruising. However, he backed in, fucked it up, doesn't want to drive anymore. So he just decided to do it over the phone. The doctor said, no, 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 let's do a video conference. So that's going to be happening in a couple days. He's going to go get his blood drawn and his blood pressure and all that stuff looked at the day before. So he has up-to-date results, blah, 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 blah. So... Depending on what that outcome is and depending if he actually goes to an actual heart doctor, which is what he's been talking about, I may be able to go to Idaho with my friends after all. Because now that he is no longer walking around with a cane, he's no longer exhausted and he can't even form sentences together without getting mad or depressed. He's not getting lightheaded and almost tripping and falling over after doing barely any kind of work. And, uh, yeah, so there is positive signs, but again, he's not taking any medication, so I don't know what the side effects of that are. So I don't want to assume anything, but I can unequivocally say that it looks more positive than a week ago. So that's good. Uh, nothing new on the, uh, singles front. Talked to a few girls once or twice, but then they ghosted me or I didn't want to talk to them anymore. So I just wished them good luck. I got some strange phone calls. It said I got missed calls on my WhatsApp, which is strange, but I don't, I don't even want to investigate. It's, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much giving up on online dating here. I know I've been saying this over and over and over again about going on a break or something, but it's, it's just, I don't like what it does to me because I get all excited when I read a profile that I like. And then on the off chance that that woman also likes me and we start chatting I don't know what it is. Things end well the first couple days of talking and then it's nothing. Or we don't even get past day one. Or things are going good and I go to talk to them the next day and everything has been deleted. So it's, there's probably a fraudulent account to begin with. I don't fucking know. I assume every account that I'm talking to is fake until I either video chat with them, we get pictures, or we actually meet. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. that That's what we have to do. But... I think that's how you kind of cover yourself. And single ladies out there, if you're listening, I know you have your own rules that you do, which I don't blame you. I, you know, I, I truly don't blame ladies for their precautions they take. Some guys make fun of it. Oh, ladies are so sensitive. They, they have to make all these phone calls and check in with everybody. And I'm like, well, yeah, because they get murdered all the time, dickhead. I have been on plenty of bad dates. And to my knowledge, I have never been murdered by one of them. Women get murdered all the time. So I can understand why they may want to check in with their friends every couple hours or they're texting all the time or something. I think if they're up front about it, at least like, oh, I'm just texting my friend, you know, just so you know, you don't think they're being rude or that they're not enjoying themselves. I don't know. I don't know. But I know women have a lot of uh, dating rules as well. 
And a lot of them want to video chat first, which makes perfect sense because I want to as well because that cuts out the catfishing aspect of the online dating and the digital space, which is so fucking brutal. I, I wouldn't wish this hell on anyone. But then I see what my options are out in the real world and I think, oh, I better get back on the dating app. <laughs> Not doing too good out there. Not doing too good out there. Uh, but before we move on to some topics, let's see. I did venture out the other day because I need a pedicure. I haven't got a pedicure in a while. I got one maybe two, three months ago, which was the first one I've gotten in probably eight months. And they did a mediocre job, but not a good enough job for me to go back. There is one about 10 minutes away from my house, maybe even less. And online they kind of had iffy reviews worse reviews than the previous place i went to a couple months ago but i thought it's right next to the house i can go on my lunch break i can grab a latte afterwards let's do it baby well the reviews were too high in my opinion <laughs> the owner was nice the owner was nice but it just felt cheap it was overpriced the woman doing my feet made no eye contact, did not really do much in terms of a pedicure. There was no, um, there was no joy in her eyes, which I understand. I understand. You're holding a white man's feet and you're cleaning it and washing it and massaging it. I get it. You shouldn't jump out of bed every day and say, oh, thank God I get to touch more people's feet today. I get it. But at least say something to me like, hello, how was your day? Something, something. And not to be sexist, but all the women were extremely old and maybe it's because I'm a single guy and a horn dog and a pervert. Fuck if I know, but I am a cis white male. I do like when I go to a pedicure place for the women to be somewhat attractive, somewhat around my age. But again, I think that's asking too much. And as I say it out loud, I want to kick myself in the balls, but that's how I feel. <laughs> I don't think there's anything better than a, a very hot, hot woman massaging your feet, washing them, clipping your toenails, and making you laugh when they're working your heel. I love that shit. I love it. Uh, Jesus, as I say it out loud, it does seem overtly sexual, and I hope I'm not a pervert. But, hey, what are you going to do? I'm in the mood for uh, a new nail salon. There's plenty of them around here. In fact, maybe the next one, I'll go back to the place I went to a few months ago, because compared to the one I just went to, they are the best in the area. But see, it's funny. Someone recommended to me the best of the best of the best in this area. It's out in four corners. And it was expensive. I took one of my friends out there for her and I's massage. It was about $110, including the tip. That's a lot of fucking money for just a pedicure. Usually, if you're spending $110 at a nail salon, you're getting a pedicure, a medicure. Maybe they're doing, um, they're painting your nails. They do maybe some other things. If they're No, maybe that's about it. Maybe those three things. But neither of us got a uh, paint on our nails and it was just a pedicure and it was $110. And it wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. I would, I would meet him halfway and be like, okay, maybe this is a $70 job combined, a $30 pedicure job together, but not $110. Now you're just fucking people over. So I'm in the hunt for a new nail salon. So if you guys have any recs, for a good pedicure place around uh, Kent, Auburn, Maple Valley. Black Diamond and Ravensdale is a little too out there. Covington's a little too out there as well. My favorite place, I miss it so much, is in Renton. But I, I'm not going to be driving to Renton just to get my nails done. Although I say it out loud and I don't know why not. I drive to Renton for other stupid shit. So, eh, maybe I need to wake up a little bit. So, anyway, enough about what's going on with me. Let's move on to our first t -t topic. I had to do a big old bong rip before we discuss our first topic tonight, which is the TV show Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Holy hell, did I love this show. But if you watch the show, then you probably understand why I needed to do a bong rip. The show almost puts you into like a manic, psychosomatic episode. Just the plot of the show is harrowing. I mean, just listen to this. A boy who is half human and half deer survives in a post-apocalyptic world with other hybrids. Just slow it down and take that in. 
half human, half deer. I mean, that's a show right there. Survives. Okay, so some shit went down. In a post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic, those are the best kind of apocalyptics. With other hybrids? You mean there's more? Yes! And at first, I'll be brutally honest here, I saw the image, or the thumbnail, if you will, on the trailer, and I thought, eh, that shit looks like it's for kids or teens, and I skipped right by it for months. And then when I got released, I saw that it was plastered all over Netflix, and I thought, man, they're really pushing this kid show. I really gave it no thought. Then I started to hear people at work and some of my friends talk about it. Some of them don't have the best recommendations, to put it politely, but others do. And so then I thought, well, let me at least watch the trailer. And I watched the trailer, and I still thought it was kind of a family-oriented kid show, but it did look halfway decent to me. And so I thought, fuck it, let me watch the first episode. Holy shit, is that Will Forte? And I gotta tell ya, 15, 20 minutes in, I was hooked. I was hooked. I don't know who the kid is. His name is Christian Convery. Convery? What a weird ass name, kid. You better change it. He's only 11 years old. He was in Playing with Fire. He was in the movie Venom. I don't remember that shit. And a couple other kids shows. Something called uh, Big Boy. Oh, Beautiful Boy. Beautiful Boy. I don't know. Don't know anything about it. So I really don't know anything about this kid. But. On IMDb, he's got pictures with some pretty famous actors like Tom Hardy. Obviously, he was in Venom. I think Queen Latifah's over there. I didn't know anyone else in the show. I knew Will Forte, but I'm not going to spoil anything. And some of the other actors I may have seen, like Big Man. I've seen him before in other things, but he's not a star. What is his name, by the way? Nonzo Anozi? The Indian couple. I have never seen them before in anything. And they are so good. So good. Adil Akhtar is the husband. And the wife is Aliza Vellani. Both are just great in this. And then you got the teenager playing Bear. She's a little over the top, but I understand it. She's uh, Stefan Stefania Laviod. And boy, some of these are some weird names. I, I mean, I didn't have to make Owen so Italian. Stefania Lave Owen. <laughs> like a very worldly name. Stefania Lave. And then you get Owen. So I don't know what dad does. And who else? Who else? Oh, the, um, well, I don't want to give anything away, but there's a Hispanic woman actress, Danya Ramirez. I've seen her in something. She was pretty good in it, too. And then you get a bunch of other kid actors that round out some of the hybrids. James Brolin, the narrator, he does a very good job. I was wondering whose voice that was, and that is James Brolin. And the villain, I thought he was someone completely different. I thought he was an actor that I had seen in Peaky Blinders on Netflix. I thought it was the oldest brother, but it's not him. The villain of the show, the general is Neil Sadalands. I don't know what the hell he was in. I look him up on IMDb. He's in a couple episodes of The Flash, The 100, The Americans. He was in Happen Leonard. Oh, that was a decent show. That's an underrated show, by the way. Uh, leaving Sweet Tooth for a moment. Happen Leonard. I don't know what channel that's on. I want to say it's one of those weird shows that's on like TBS or TNT. Oh, it's on Sundance. Well, it's equally weird. It's reminiscent of like a buddy cop series from like the late 80s early 90s but it's updated and it's, it's really good just check out happen leonard uh, watch the first episode maybe the first two or three you really get to love the characters and their backstories and anyway anyway but back to sweet tooth for a show that i didn't think i would like i fell in love with it immediately but i gotta tell you the kid is an amazing actor and I mean, come on, people. Most child actors ruin the movie, okay? Most times, if you're watching a movie, especially a blockbuster movie, and for whatever reason, one of the main characters is a child, most of the time I think, God, I really wish that kid would just get it. Like, I remember watching Jurassic World, that pile of shit that I'm still obsessed with. I hate the Jurassic Park sequels, besides the Psycho and the Lost World's an underrated movie. Very good. Very good. 
but all the other Jurassic Park sequels have been pure pee-pee caca. But I love them. I love them. But anyway, Jurassic World, that spittle in the corner of your mouth. <laughs> uh, if you remember, two of the, not main actors, but two of the supporting actors were a teenage boy and his younger brother, who must have been eight or nine. You know, the real annoying age. And of course, they get lost in the park, and then the dinosaur's chasing them. And I couldn't help it, but I was thinking the entire time, good God, I hope the dinosaur fucking eats those kids. But this actor, this Chris Convery, is that his name? Chris Convery? Christian Convery. I call him Chris. We're, we're good friends. I can call him Chris. You call him Christian. He's Chris to me. He's probably, I'd have, I'd have to think about this a little bit more than I am right now because I'm stoned, but I haven't seen a child actor this good for the first time since Haley Joel Osment in The Sixth Sense. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, Angelo, Haley Joel Osment was actually in Forrest Gump. Yeah, for a scene. That doesn't count. You know who was the best in my life? Was Kirsten Dunst in Interview with the Vampire. Side note, did you know that the role that Christian Slater played, the interview were, uh, you know, one of the main characters, his name is literally in the title of the movie interview with the vampire he's conducting the interview christian slater was only cast because the original actor that was going to get it was uh river phoenix rivers phoenix but of course he od'd and died uh in johnny depp's arms that poor son of a bitch and so what the hell are we talking about interview with the vampire oh kirsten dunst when i saw that movie i could not believe that someone that was roughly my age by the way i saw that movie way too young <laughs> that movie come out i want to say i was under 10 years old when i saw that movie interview 1994 so i must have i was at least eight when it came out so i was i was eight or nine maybe i was 10 maybe but i, I was too young and kirsten dunst i was blown away that someone that was my age was this good and terrifying she is horrifying in that movie everybody liked that cute fucking brat from jerry Maguire. Did you know that the human head weighs eight pounds? Okay, that was a good role. But that did not require acting. That little fuck just had to look cute. And he did. And he he was adorable. If anyone saw Jerry Maguire and didn't leave the movie, what, no matter what you thought of the movie, you could have hated it, Jerry Maguire. But the moment that movie ends, your first thought should be, well, this movie was a real waste of my time, but that kid was pretty cute. That kid was pretty adorable. And then, it, but the problem is he never did anything else. He was in that little Bow Wow basketball movie, but that, that doesn't count. And that was it. That was it. Maybe something else. At least Haley Joel Osment got fat and became a cult horror actor later in life. <laughs> and he was in The Boys, which is a pretty funny scene. But this kid, this Christian Convery, watch out, man. Watch out. But back to the show Sweet Tooth. Uh, there were some episodes that disturbed me so badly. And I don't want to go into spoilers here. But when they're conducting research on the hybrids, I could not watch it. I did, but it was very difficult. Very hard. And I got to tell you, there were some episodes where I really felt sick to my stomach. I felt really anxious and really nervous. And I had to think, am I enjoying this show? And I know it's geared towards family uh, for whatever reason. I can think it's fantasy. Fantasy family shows tend to get away with a little bit more stuff than normal family-oriented programming. But this one, I was talking, my mother loved this show. And I was telling her how much it was kind of depressing me. And she was like, really? I thought it was really light and lovely. I'm like, light and lovely? They're dissecting, you know. And she thought, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And I said, what about the doctor that had the virus? And when they what they did to him in the house? And he and she said, oh, yeah, that too. I forgot. I was like, oh, convenient. You forgot all the horrific scenes. <laughs> but overall, overall, on a scale of 1 to 10... I'd probably give it a 8.1, which some of you might think, oh, that's a little low. Why is he devoting so much time to this show? Because it has promise. It's telling a new story. I have not seen this before. I could not predict what was going to happen. 
is some of the dialogue and the characters one dimensional? Of course. Of course. Is it pretty cringe worthy? Yes. However, on the surface, it's a very enjoyable, entertaining show. If you have uh, sensitive sensibilities like me, prepare yourself to feel a little anxiety. Uh, make sure you smoke indica when you watch it. Never sativa, because if you smoke sativa and watch this, you'll be you'll be crying and bouncing around the room because of the, the manic episode it's putting you in. It ended on a cliffhanger that I can't wait for. And I know I talked a lot about the dark side of the show, but there really is a lot more lightheartedness and love and compassion in the show. And it does leave you feeling more positive than negative. I don't want to just paint this as a show that's going to really be hard to watch. It's really not. There's just certain scenes and certain things affect me in film that doesn't affect other people. I've noticed this. I get um, very emotional sometimes, whereas I look around and no one else is reacting that way. So it's just me. I'm just a unique snowflake. But I can't wait for season two. I'm excited. I'm excited. I like shows that surprise me. I like shows that I predict something and they surprise me and say, nope, you're actually going to enjoy this and you actually can't predict where the show is going to go, which I didn't. I could not guess what was going to happen, which is rare for me. I pride myself on ruining things because I like to predict what's going to happen. I have ruined a many a TV shows and, and movies for friends and family by saying, I bet this is going to happen. And then it did. And then they look at me like I ruined their birthday. And that's the burden that I must carry with me every day. Okay. I'm a party pooper, okay? I like to show off how smart I am, which only builds my narcissism a little bit higher. But don't worry. My internal dialogue that I tell myself every day chips away at that narcissism to a nice little balance. My self-esteem is right where it needs to be. But anywho, I'm also enjoying the, this latest season of Rick and Morty. And I know this latest season is getting shit on a lot which this is this is not a hot take but is there a worse fan base than the rick and morty fan base i mean a bunch of fucking incels this is why this country needs to legalize prostitution so that all these rick and morty fans and you know young men like them that are angry and living in their parents basement because the economy sucks and they're too uh lazy and they don't have a drive to better themselves, but also the economy sucks and the job market sucks. And I, I get it. I get it. We're not fucking as much as our parents' generation. I get it. I get it. But if you make prostitution legal, you're going to make a dent in these men because let's face facts. Let's face facts. These men, eh, some of them get a little angry online, start uh, using language that they shouldn't use, start going to marches that they shouldn't be having. And next thing you know, uh, they're shooting up a movie theater. So, to curb that, let them go to a state-sanctioned whorehouse where they have male and female and transsexual whores. And I, I'm not saying whores is a negative. I completely uh, wish the best for our sex workers. I support them as much as I can without actually giving them money. But if it's safe and if they hire security and if they keep the drunks and the riffraff out and they actually let people do what is only biological and they get that uh, release, I bet you're going to see a lot less hatred online, a lot less mass shootings by lonely, single, young white men. Just an idea. Just an idea. If their balls are empty, the clips are empty. <laughs> That's a t-shirt right there. So, I, yeah, but I like Rick and Morty this season. Is it as good as the other seasons? Probably not. I would say so far, it's not even close. It's the worst season. But it's still pretty good. Every episode is good. I I personally enjoy it, and I laugh, and I rewatch it. So, eh, get over yourself. Uh, Rick and Morty's not uh, trying to tell thought-provoking, in-depth, philosophical uh, episodes all the time. Sometimes they're going to have horny episodes. Get over it. Get over it. That's what makes the show unique. And what other show am I enjoying? I've talked about Move to Heaven, that Korean show. But that's another one. It's even more emotional than Sweet Tooth. I, I can only watch one episode a week of Move to Heaven. 
because I am. It's a forty-minute episode, and I'm crying twenty minutes of it. So you have to pace yourself, okay? I don't want to dry myself out so much because I'm crying. My tear ducts are just sh shooting out like the Hoover Dam. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you do. I, I think I had something funny in my mind, and then when I vocalized it, it all got mishmashed. But you know what I'm trying to say by calling my tear ducts Hoover Dam. You get what I'm trying to say. But was there another show? Rick and Morty. I'm excited about Marvel's What If. That's coming out soon. Sweet Tooth was dank. Oh, this current season of Dave. That's another one. I was talking to my manager about this because he and I both love Dave. I wasn't really enjoying this latest season of Dave. I mean, I was enjoying it enough to watch it, but I wasn't enjoying it, enjoying it like I was the first season. But there was a few good ones, and then it took a little lull. And the last two episodes, really the last episode that I just saw, when he got kicked out of his crib because he's not making the music, spoiler. And the whole episode is him and his parents. That was a that was a really good episode. Not a genius episode. If you want to see a genius episode of Dave from season two, watch the one where he goes to uh, what's that producer's house? Oh, he's always on Dave. I'm trying to blank. You know who I'm talking about? The famous famous producer. Son of a bitch. Hold on. I got to look this up. It's the one where Gata and his buddy come over to the big producer's house and they're just talking about how Dave and this producer can get away with all this bromance gay stuff because they've never had to suffer the consequences of things. I think it's the episode called Antsy. Is this the episode I'm thinking of? Gata? Yeah. Is in this one. Benny Blanco. That's who I'm talking about. Yeah, Benny Blanco's pretty goddamn funny in Dave. But that's the episode I would recommend this, this season so far. Overall, I give Dave a C plus for season two. Rick and Morty, I also give a C plus. But you know what? Not everything has to be a masterpiece, you assholes. If you enjoy it, enjoy it. You don't have to get the cream of the crop every single time. This is America's problem. We want the best, and we won't settle for anything less. Ugh, a bunch of fucking babies. But uh, let's move on to some other fun stuff. Well, after a little dip against the Rangers, the Mariners have now taken two of three from the much superior Tampa Bay Rays. And guys, I gotta tell you, if you're a Mariners fan, you have to be happy with the way that this uh, Toro kid is hitting. Uh, I know everyone, including myself, disliked the Kendall Graveman trade, especially to Houston, especially, especially, especially. I don't need to repeat all that nonsense. However, 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 we got this Toro kid. He's played seven or eight games for us and he's hit like 440 440 he's got on base every single game and he hits a couple home runs i think he's hit three home runs four doubles or something the guy is looking like the next ty france so there's two infield positions wrapped up for the future yeah let me double check those numbers here okay toro has reached base in all seven of his games at the mariners forgive me i said eight He's batting 440, I was right, with eight runs scored, three home runs, five RBIs, a 520 on base percentage, a 920 slugging percentage, and a 1.440 OPS. Oh, my pants are filling up. So, I think, all in all, we traded a reliever who may have been on his way out anyway because he was a free agent at the end of the year. And do I still hope we can re-sign Graveman? Of course. But he was a free agent at the end of the year. This Toro kid, who's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Although, seven-game sample. I get it. I get it. I get it. But you can dream a little bit. If he's the second baseman of the future, and then you got J.P. Crawford at third, and maybe Ty France is your D.H., and Evan White, if he ever is healthy, and he can maybe hit above 200, will be your first baseman. Third base, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do, but you got Carl Raleigh as the catcher, and I feel like we're pretty good with outfielders. I don't need to name the names. So, people, how can you not be liking this? How can you not be liking this? The Rangers series hurt. It really did. But luckily, we rebounded and have taken two in a row after losing two in a row. But, good God, if we could have won those two games against Texas, we would have moved up in the standings because Houston and Oakland lost both of those games. We could have gained ground on them. 
Um, what else? What else? Oh, moving on to quickly politics. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on politics. I'm not in the mood. It could be the bong rip that I've been doing, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the news. Thank God the CDC finally, finally issued the eviction moratum. Uh, they extended it. I don't know why they had to wait until the deadline, it seemed, but they uh, extended the uh, eviction mor moratorium, so that's good. Unfortunately... It looks like Chantel Brown is going to beat Nina Turner in that Senate race in Ohio, which is upsetting to me because I love Nina Turner. I think she is arguably, arguably one of the best politicians in the game right now. And let me see. It was a close. Yeah, not, uh, they're calling it with 91.8% reporting. Oof, and she lost by about 4,000 votes and about 6%. So I was hoping that Turner would win, obviously. But of course, Sherrod Brown, or Chantel Brown, forgive me, she had uh, support of Hillary Clinton, James Clyburn, and other extremely wealthy Democratic moderate elites, while Nina Turner had support from Bernie Sanders, AOC, The Squad, and other progressive candidates as well as Cornell West but what else is in the news here I agree with Biden and Pelosi Andrew Cuomo should resign he was found guilty of sexual misconduct and all that stuff so he absolutely should resign and plus even though the FBI dropped the case I believe I think it was the FBI but the someone in the federal agency dropped the investigation into the uh, old folks home that he put old people with COVID back into retirement homes and old folks homes where it spread like a wildfire and thousands of people died, you know, basically created a gulag and then he lied about it. And then he wrote a book about how to lead during the pandemic. So even though you're Italian buddy, oh, go fuck your butter. But what else is going on? Judge temporarily blocks Texas order targeting suspected migrants. That's probably a good idea. Florida becomes the epicenter of COVID-19 surge. I could have told you that. By the way, speaking of Florida, you know they have a python epidemic going on in that state. Pythons have wiped out all mammals in the Everglades. Well, I'm being dramatic, but they it's a, it's a it's a big problem. Alligators and pythons, that's pretty much what you got in Florida. I don't know why this country doesn't have a mandate saying, "Okay, uh, we're going to go away from plastic and we're going to go towards boa and snake skin." <laughs> it's reusable. Um I don't know if that would work. I, I like snakes. I don't want to think of skinning them and killing them, but they are eating everything, including dogs and cats, and they're eating the indigenous animals, so we have to do something about them. So I don't know why we don't say, all right, let's push back on China a little bit and not have slave-made uh, like shoes and things. Let's make them here, but let's use boa skin instead, snake skin, so that you know, it'd be cool. Everyone's wearing snakeskin shoes and boots and gloves and hats and everything. I mean, by the way, people, there are billions of these snakes. You, you could go out every day and kill uh, 500 of them. It's not going to make a dent. You're going to have to go big. Same thing with the, uh, the pigs in the Midwest and Texas. People, if you just Google craziest animal invasions America, maybe work on the words in that search. Maybe work on them. <laughs> But you would see some crazy shit, is my point. Uh, Cuomo refuses to resign after bombshell sexual harassment report. Well, that was nine hours ago, so who knows. DeSantis falls behind Christ in the Florida poll. Oh, maybe DeSantis isn't the next president of the United States. Trump-backed Mike Carey wins GOP primary in Ohio special election. So, as you can see, not a lot going on. The Olympics are happening, but who gives a fuck? Uh, I, for one, applaud Simone Biles for speaking out and getting uh, for getting mental help. And I understand people are saying, well, it's the Olympics, and if she can't deal with it, then she shouldn't take someone's spot. She should let someone else take it if she can't deal with it. No, calm down, people. The most likely explanation that I have heard is that Simone Biles has always taken Ritalin for her anxiety. She's taken it for years. And not to take it on a downturn here, but that pedophile guy, the U.S. gymnast team, Nasser, whatever his name was, 
There was diddling all those poor gymnasts. It's disgusting. I don't even want to talk about that. But, unfortunately, a lot of U.S. gymnasts were caught up in that, so no wonder she has to take Ritalin. And Japan, however, views Ritalin, I believe, don't quote me on this, but they view it in the same sense as Major League Baseball deems Ritalin a performance-enhancing drug. They think of it like a steroid. I don't, I'm not a medical expert. I don't know a dick about dick when it comes to Ritalin. However, I feel like if Japan said, hey, U.S. Olympian Simone Biles, who's already, already the greatest gymnast in the world, and she probably will remain the greatest gymnast in my lifetime. I mean, it, it, even after she dropped out, I think she still won bronze in a bunch of shit. So that, even when she's half ass in it, she wins bronze. And I don't know if she's half ass in it, but you know, you, you get my drift. But I don't know why Japan couldn't just say, hey, for the Olympics, we're going to make an exception for all incoming athletes, as long as they're not like, you know, the Russian freaks that show up. They're all doped up since childhood. I mean, uh, watch that documentary. I'm drawing a blank on the name, but if you just type in Russian steroid documentary, watch that shit. They've had state-sponsored doping for decades in Russia. So maybe for Russia and maybe China... And maybe any other fishy countries, Japan could be like, no, 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 no. We're going to have to double check your work. But, you know, for the civilized countries. <laughs> ah, let them take the riddle and who gives a fuck. Um, but I applaud someone Biles regardless. I feel like this younger generation, the millennials of the Gen Zs, are much more open with their mental issues or the way that they feel. Um, not everyone is depressed, but I feel like we are more open to talk about it. I know I have reached out to many a friends and family just to talk, and I have also been called, and I have done my best job to listen, because sometimes that's what you need to do. So, yeah, I think we're way better than previous generations in that respect. You know, my mother it talks openly about her struggles. My father, forget it. I, I still think he views any kind of psychiatry help, any kind of mental health as a level of weakness. Um, he's not as vocal about it or as forceful about that belief, but I can I can kind of sense that. I may be wrong. I may be reading the old man wrong, but who knows. But uh, I think with that, I, I, we're close to wrapping up here. Let me check my notes and uh, let's take a look and see if we have anything else to talk about. Yeah, I guess one last thing before we can wrap uh, this puppy up here is that uh, my birthday's coming up. August 22nd, I will turn 35. Oh, God, why? And I don't feel 35, but then again, when I think back to when I was a child, or just a young teen or something, and I would think of what 35 would be like, I basically thought of it as a senior citizen, as I was uh, on my way to retirement. I remember looking at someone on television or in a movie and they were 35. I just thought, oh, man, they're so fucking old. And even when you see them in person, you think, oh my God, that person is going to be in a wheelchair this time next year. <laughs> and now that you actually are turning 35 or whatever age you are, I'm sure you don't feel the way that you thought you'd feel when you were a lot younger. But the older I get, the less I really give a fuck about my birthday. I really don't. I think birthday parties, the majority of birthday parties, are for the people throwing them. They want to feel good by trying to make you feel good. I don't think it's selfish, mind you, but let's uh, call it what it is. It's a mutual celebration, which is great, which is great. If you have people in your life that want to celebrate your life, more power to them. And I'm all for it. But I don't think it's, uh, well, at least I wouldn't do this. I would never plan my own birthday. However, I would plan a birthday if it was an important birthday to me. Uh, for example, my 40th. If I'm not married or have a family by then, or if I don't have a partner or someone in my life that will either plan it or I will trust to do a good job planning it, I will just do it myself. And I think it would be great. I wanted to do a big, big, big party for my 30th. However, 
I just wasn't in the stage of my life where I could do everything that I wanted to do. And really, I couldn't do the even 25% of what I wanted to do. For my 30th, I wanted to like rent out this big ass convention hall. I wanted to invite as many people as I could. I wanted to have it catered. I wanted there to be just a fucking party. Like I wanted there to be DJs, live music. I wanted there to be a roast of me. Like I wanted to have maybe an hour where people would watch me on a dais just getting my ass chewed out by a bunch of friends and family. And then I could go up there and start, you know, busting balls and making fun of people. I've wanted, I even reached out to some people about this. I really wanted to go hard and go big. I wanted it to be memorable, but I was going to plan all of it. However, when it, when the time came, I of course had not the financial means or the emotional or mental means to do any of that. But now that I'm 34, 35 here in a couple weeks, I feel like in five years I absolutely will be able to do that. So that I'm looking forward to. But my 35th, eh, I don't really care. And some people say that, God, Angela, why are you so mopey about your birthday or morose or you just don't care? Well, that's kind of how I was raised. Birthdays weren't a big deal when I was growing up, especially with my father. My mother liked to celebrate her children's birthday, but her own, eh. She'd give you a shit if you didn't say anything or do anything, but it wasn't like a big, huge deal to her. It, I think it was more an internal thing. My dad could give two fucks. And, of course, when I got to a certain age, I started to realize, oh, birthdays are meaning less and less and less. I think it was probably when I was a teenager and I was like uh, 19 or something. I realized, oh, being ni- turning 19 doesn't mean shit. But it was kind of a big deal in the sense that when you're a teenager, you're getting big birthdays every year, especially your 18th. And, I mean, your 19th and 20th are kind of weird birthdays because you can do a lot of shit, but you can't legally drink yet. But you can, but you can't. But, you know, I, guys, I was a, a party animal. I was like uh, Jim Belushi in Animal House by the age of 13. That's just who I was. So uh, my birthdays, I think, because of that kind of party lifestyle, didn't really mean much. because It was just another excuse to drink, smoke, have a good time, embarrass yourself in front of ladies, and then wonder why you're not getting laid. However, once you go past your 21st, Does anybody really care about your 22nd, 23rd, 24th birthday? Maybe 25. Maybe 25. I don't remember what I did for my 25th, but I distinctly remember from 25 to 30, it was all shit. Now, I had an amazing birthday. Becker's did probably the best birthday I will ever have in my life for my 30th. Was it my 30th or 29th? I always forget this. I think it was my 30th, but it doesn't matter. It was a, whatever birthday it was, it was a masterpiece. When I die and you know how they say life flashes before your eyes and you see some of the most important moments in your life. I think I, I think that birthday party would make the cut. I think it would definitely make the top 20, maybe 25. I mean, definitely top 50, but if it doesn't, if it doesn't crack the top 25, I'd be pissed at whoever made my dying moment uh real the fuck was i talking about oh yeah so i really don't give a shit about birthdays uh i give more shit about my family and friends birthdays i like buying my friends kids birthday presents and i like making it special for them but for myself i don't know i sometimes i get embarrassed when people go too big for me i don't know I, i like the limelight when i'm controlling it but when it's thrust upon me and I, and it's and it's not of my making I get real cagey and very anxious and my pits start to sweat and my uh, dip shrivels up into a turtle head and I just remember being the fat chubby kid at uh, summer camp I don't know what happened but anyway so my birthday's coming up but I really don't give a shit but I'll be with friends I believe if I go on my trip to Idaho I think I'll be there on my birthday so that'll be fun But uh, I think with that, we can wrap this mofo up. Uh, If you guys want to tell me your birthday stories or what your thoughts on birthdays, or if you just want me to talk about anything, just hit me up. Sometimes I get hit up on, but there's not really any questions. I just want to talk about something I talked about on the podcast, but they're not giving me anything to talk about. If you want to do that, uh, hit your boy up. Anyway, uh, I love y'all. Hope y'all take it sleazy. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Treat others as you want to be treated, all that nonsense. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the flip side.